In this video, The Science of Yeast, I will be presenting a fun experiment for children 8 years old and up um, to participate in, and it is a great way to learn about chemistry and biology in an interactive and hands-on way. I have also created a interactive worksheet that goes along with this experiment that um, students can use while they are participating in the experiment. And this worksheet will be linked down below. So the learning outcomes for this activity are to observe a living organism, which is yeast, um, speed up a chemical reaction, and second is to understand the conversion of hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen in the experiment and um, understand the factors that can affect speed of a reaction. And finally, the last learning outcome is to observe real-world examples of the connections between biology and chemistry. Alright, so uh, getting into the introduction, we're going to first look at what is yeast. So yeast are tiny little organisms and they're co the cousins to things like mushrooms and mold. So they are way more common than you might think and um, that's because people use yeast constantly to make bread all the time. Um, yeast is a key ingredient to allowing bread to become light and airy and it gives bread its characteristic texture. Since yeast is a living organism, it contains many of the proteins and enzymes that um, humans similarly have and these molecules allow us and yeast to function and we'll be learning more about that. And so in these pictures here, you can see um, all the way on the left is what yeast really looks like um, to the naked eye. And the next two pictures are pictures of yeast, um, what they look like microscopically. All right, so now getting into the science of this experiment. So enzymes are cool little molecules that um, work to make reactions happen faster. And this one special enzyme that we'll be focusing on is called catalase. And this enzyme um, protects organisms from harmful substances by quickly um, allowing the conversion of harmful chemicals like hydrogen peroxide to be converted rapidly into harmless water and oxygen. And so this um, enzyme catalase is present within yeast. Um, it is important to note, however, in this reaction that enzymes do not cause the reaction, they simply make it happen faster. Alright, so in this experiment, you will be conducting a chemical reaction using yeast and hydrogen peroxide and observe the way in which hydrogen peroxide is converted into water and oxygen. So you will be able to see the oxygen through the production of bubbles in this experiment. And this reaction only occurs once we add the yeast to the hydrogen peroxide since it contains a special enzyme catalase that I mentioned. So what is especially important to know and understand through this experiment is that oftentimes biology and chemistry are introduced as two completely different sub separate subjects, but that's not true. They are actually interconnected in an infinite amount of ways. Without biology, there would be no chemistry and vice versa. And in this experiment, it is the enzymes which are considered the biological component that allow for the reaction to occur, which is the chemical component. So as you can see, they are um, interconnected. And now we are going to get started with the experiment and I'm going to be presenting the materials first. Okay, so for this experiment, we are going to need a few basic items that um, are e easily retrievable from most people's kitchen. Uh, so the first thing here is hydrogen peroxide and this is the 3% version. And then we are going to need, need some measuring spoons. Um, in this case, I have a 1 4th cup measurement and a tablespoon measurement. Then, of course, we're going to need some yeast, and that's one packet. We're going to need four cups and one um, cup of water. And then we're going to need some sticky notes to uh, label our cups and a Sharpie. And then here I just have a tray um, to conduct the experiment on. 
Okay, so now we're gonna get started with our experiment. So I went in ahead and labeled um, our two sets of cups here. So this one has cold tap water in it, and then this one has um, warm to hot um, tap water in it. And I labeled that with a sticky note. And I went ahead and put one fourth cup of water um, of each temperature into each cup. So now what we wanna do is we want to go ahead and take our yeast and add one half tablespoon into each of these um, cups with the water. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Just measure that out. And then we are going to let this sit for around five minutes um, just to let the yeast develop all the way um, and activate. Okay, so I also t went ahead and took a knife just to stir the two mixtures to really ensure that the yeast was um, incorporated all the way into the water. So while we wait on that to activate, we are going to take our hydrogen peroxide and we're gonna put three tablespoons into each of these larger cups. So you're just gonna take your measuring spoon and carefully measure that out. So three tablespoons in each. Okay, so now it's been around five minutes since we've let the yeast incorporate into the water. Uh, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these two um, hot water and cold water cups and then put it into the corresponding hydrogen peroxide cup. And this reaction is gonna happen really quickly and we're gonna um, know any sort of observations that we can see. Um, so keep an eye on that as soon as I pour this in. And as you can see, both have a lot of bubbles developing, and that is because the yeast is reacting with the hydrogen peroxide. So, um, just right off the bat, you can see that the um, hot water cup um, made a lot more bubbles in this cup than the cold water cup, and that's because um, yeast um, activates um, better and it does better in warmer conditions. And that's it for the experiment. Thank you for watching. And again, you can find the accompanying worksheet to this experiment attached below. Thank you.